Good evening. We'll call this meeting to order. Madam Clerk, if you would take roll call. Certainly. Mr. Braun? Present. Ms. Pacenook? Present. Ms. Reclue? Present. Ms. Sabacher? Here. Mr. Shiverdecker? Here. Mr. Simmons? Here. Mr. Stone? Present. And Mr. Washington is absent tonight. We have seven, uh, po uh, seven positive, seven present. Thank you. At this time, we'll ask our uh, Pastor Williamson to lead us in an invocation and Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we're grateful on this blessed fall evening to be here together in the chambers. Once again, asking your anointing on our mayor and council persons, those that have come from the community to participate, to make government strong, efficient, and work within the lives of the people it serves. For that, we're grateful. That's a privilege. We pray, Lord, tonight for the continued work that progresses us as a community and for those that lead it day by day. I want to pray for two or three events that are right before us. The first is a very dangerous night for children. It's Halloween. That doesn't mean it's a negative night, but it's a dangerous night. So we pray that all of us who work together, not just the police officers, not just the first responders, but all of us help them to keep our children safe. This is imperative on all of us to see that children are not harmed, are not put in harm's way, and are safe in the joys of their lives. Secondly, Lord, I want to pray for the continued burden and trial that coronavirus has presented not only to our community, but throughout our nation and our world. And on the frontliners, Lord, who continue to work by day and night in ICUs all across our nation, we pray, Lord, for their safety as they work so hard to administer and provide the care that the critically ill need in times such as these. I would continue, Lord, to pray for the fires out west in Colorado and California and the tens of thousands who have been uprooted, whose properties and homes have been destroyed. We pray, Lord, that you will intervene as your perfect will is on behalf of our neighbors to the west. We ask you tonight, Lord, to meet in this session and I pray that anything that is discussed and any decisions that are made, Lord, that they be made pleasing to you. I pray, Lord, tonight for your continuing monitoring of Chief Myers' health. I pray, Lord, for the McCarter family in their time of grief. And thank you, Lord, one prayer to thank you for all the prayers that you've answered for our city family throughout these benevolent years. God, in direct this session tonight and lead it according to your perfect will, we give you the praise for it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Face the flag. Attention, salute, and pledge. I, I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. All right, at this time we have comments from visitors. Anyone wishing to uh, speak to the council, please come up to the podium, give your name and address, and limit your comments to five minutes or less. Good evening. I'm going to slide this forward so I'm closer to the microphone. Uh, my name is Kim Barnes. My address is 5128 County Road 105, Fulton. And I won't take but a moment, but I just wanted to step forward and express thanks on behalf of the chamber to the city council persons who uh, met with us, made time out of your busy schedules to meet with us the other day and have a good discussion. Uh, we appreciated that time very, very much. Uh, and I just wanted to mention based on a question we'd received in that discussion, we pulled together a little um, recap of sources of revenue and separate from the chamber, uh, as you'd asked. And so um, tonight, we know you're going to consider this question very carefully. We appreciate your consideration. We appreciate the partnership and the collaboration and the commitment to keep building on that. So thank you very much. Very good. Hopefully we'll have something to present back to you guys <coughs> after tonight. Are there any other visitors wishing to comment? Seeing none, we'll move along. 
So we got a lot to cover tonight. Um, hopefully we can make some progress here. We'll start with the consent agenda. Uh, council members may choose to remove an item for discussion prior to approving the agenda. <clears throat> tonight we have the approval of city council meeting minutes of September 22nd, October 13th. We also have the approval of the DOA report for September. We have the, the acknowledgement of the most recent board and commi commission minutes. Airport board meeting August 4th. Historic preservation June 16th. Human Rights Commission June 29th. Park board January 8th. Planning and zoning February 10th. Public Utility Board September 28th. And Traffic Commission August 14th. I had one minor note on um, the meeting minutes on October 13th. Would you like to remove those, Ms. Paisner? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I would like to also report the, the DOA report, which is Director of Administrations, and the Parks and Rec Board January 8th of 2020, please. Very good. Are there any other requests? Uh, I have a question. Why are we getting these board minutes, in one case, almost 10 months late? So because of the coronavirus, you're receiving the, the most recently passed board minutes. So you're seeing, like I'll use Park Board for instance, they have met since January 8th. However, these are the most recent minutes that that board reviewed and passed or agreed upon that they were a true and accurate depiction of the meeting. So because we hadn't had a summary in a little while, that's why you're receiving them now. It's not, it's not that you all need to pass them. Their boards have already passed them, but this is for your information. Do you have a follow-up question? <laughs> Kind of see it in, it in his eyes, can't you? <laughs> so, for example, like on the um, the planning and zoning, we've met since February 10th, but at the last meeting, we actually approved the February 10th minutes, and so that's why we're getting them now. Right. So, you, the city council is only going to receive the most recently approved minutes from each board and commission. Okay. Motion to approve the remainder of the uh, agenda. Second. 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 Very good. I have a motion and a second. Is that clearly enough stated, Madam Clerk? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, any other discussion on this? Hearing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor say yes. 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 And oppose no. All right. We'll start with the meeting minutes of the 13th. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, mine's pretty simple. Uh, I read bill number 1596 for first reading at our last council meeting and it states that I um, I offered a motion to read it for a, or present it for second reading at that night's council meeting but we're doing second reading tonight. Okay, so that should read that it is for second reading at this meeting. Thank Correct. you, thank you. I will make sure that we notate that. Um, just for general purposes, it would probably be best for us to go ahead and get a motion to accept that change, though. Okay. Motion to accept the change is noted. Second. second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion on that? Thank you for clarifying that for us, uh, Ms. Pacenut. All those in favor say yes. 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 Opposed, no. All right. The DOA report. Uh, Mr. Braun, did you have questions on that? I, I, I do. do. Can I do Parks and Rec first? It's probably shorter and quicker. Sure. As, as I was looking at the Parks and Rec's board meeting for January 8th, obviously, I know it's it's been quite some time, but if we could, if we could, Clay, make sure that we have a quorum before we, before we vote on items, that would be wonderful. Okay. Um, and there was some things that were voted on and approved. We had three members that were present and that didn't constitute a quorum. Yeah, that's, that's a challenge sometimes, but yes, we can do it. I mean, we can do it. I, I, I hear what you're saying, but that's still, if we could make sure that happens, Got that's it. great. So that's, that's all on that one, really. Okay, DOA report. Okay. Anybody else got any other questions? One thing.
thing I would like to note that's a highlight in the DOA report is we did get approval for the replacement of the second street bridge. Um, the matching grant will be 20% on our part to do that project. It's been something we've been wanting to do for a long time. And it sounds like the, the uh, street department utilities are all trying to come up with a game plan to, to do that whole section of road, curb, and everything. So cool. that's pretty exciting. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I wanted to highlight that item as well. Isn't it something the state's saying, hey, this bridge is starting to get pretty bad. We need to fix it soon. I don't know the details on that, uh, Mr. Simmons. Kyle would be able to tell us probably. Let's build. Um, it's, it's, it's been rated deficient. So, yeah, it's, they, know it's, they know the condition. Just nobody has, has had the money. To right. Out. Well, we kind of need to fix it. We're, on, we're working on that right yep. now. Yep. Mr. Mayor, I also have a question for Kyle on his report, please. Good, because Kyle. Is it Kyle or Daryl? <laughs> I think it's Daryl. Kyle, I saw the report about the Business 54 sidewalk from Collier to Westminster. And this has been an item of, of my particular interest for a couple of years now. The the opportunity of painting a pedestrian lane on the shoulder. Mm -hmm. In some locations, that shoulder is just above gravel. Is, is that, how is the shoulder between Westminster and Collier all the way? Is there opportunity there for a handicapped scooter to go from, from Westminster to Collier as it is now? That was part of our discussion with MoDOT and they're questioning, they were, they were wondering the quality of it to be, um, to be a real ADA accessible pathway. Um, they're, they are hesitant to market as such because of, because of that. And uh, you know, there, there may be some spots that have to be uh, repaired or, or brought, up, brought up to snuff. Um, okay. So they, they really, don't want to do that. Um, what they have, what what they are willing to do right now is put some uh, pedestrian signs on on uh, basically two signs, one one down by Collier and one by Westminster um, that mark it as pedestrians. You know, are in this area. Okay. Um, it would be nice to have some. You know, our thoughts would be nice to have some sort of paint on the ground, the visual mm -hmm. that you know at least gives walkers, people that are walking through there, uh, even though it may not be perfect conditions right now, there are people walking there that gives a little bit of visual instant um, you know protection. Mm -hmm. um, but again, but I understand it. if MoDOT says that creates assumptions that this is a an ADA pathway, that right. sort of stuff, I can understand that. So what we've what we have asked them is can we at least put um, understanding that issue, mm -hmm. that ADA issue and that liability issue, we asked them, well, can we put uh, a, some bike, bike symbols, lane. bike lane symbols? And uh, I thought that had traction, but I'm waiting to hear back. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I know that they are willing to put those signs up, but it'd be nice if they could at least put some, um, put some bike symbols on there and we could even at that point do it from the roundabout all the way to Collier and uh, but it would at least mark that paint would would draw your eye and and, and uh, I think make it make it a little give you a little protection mm -hmm. so no I appreciate that very yeah. much we are working on uh, a potential cost share opportunity as well um, for the more permanent fix okay. so, I saw that. Thank you very much for the work on that. My, my next, my question is for Daryl. And I just need some help understanding. <laughs> the okay, MISO. Sir. What page are you on? I got it. Okay, we discussed this a little bit in the utility board meeting yesterday. What happened with the hurricane? Laura, I believe, was the one of you. There ended up being a small load pocket northeast of Houston that MISO, which is the independent system operator for the areas, had to shed. 
Well, when they shed that, there was monies that was owed to loads and generators that was shed. And our portion of that, of the, I'm gonna use the word socialized cost across the footprint was $28,000. So that event, that was the first time my soul has ever had to shed load. So some of the cities down there that was shed load, they actually got paid that $3,500, if I remember right, for power they didn't receive. And, it, and in many instances, due to the hurricane, they couldn't have taken it if they would have wanted to. Yeah. The, po the power lines are down, but they were told to cut load. So they, they didn't take the power that they had scheduled, so they got paid $3,500 a megawatt. That today, you probably could have bought power for $25 a megawatt. <clears throat> There's been several discussions. A lot of the stakeholders are not happy with it. They did appear that they did file the tariff that was filed with FERC. Fire. But uh, there was also some generators, I understand, that was inside that pocket that they had already priced themselves into the day ahead market at, say, $30. Well, since it was shed, they couldn't get out. Well, they had to pay real time of 3500 the other direction. So uh, we have contacted our state agency, MPUA, they are filing a dispute along with others. But so meanwhile, meanwhile, we're in August, we paid $26,725.47. Yes, and it appears that was by the tariff language. Mm -hmm. Thank you for explaining that. Okay. I appreciate it. <laughs> I just, I was not. Close enough. Mm -hmm. yep. Daryl, sure. I have a question on your smart grid report. Okay. Um, and, and it's, just, it's truly just a, a curiosity question for you, that for us to get to where we really need to be, we need an association rate of 90% or above on our equipment. What does this council need to do to get you the resources to get there? I've, I've, I've read the report. Okay. It shows that you've got some challenges. You've got some high failure rates and such with the equipment. What do we need to do to get you there? Well, I think we found part of it, not in a good way, but... A lot of the meters that we're using, the, the radio inside them is basically refurbished. They was bad somewhere in the past. We sent them back to the manufacturer. They refurbished and sent them back. And a lot of those aren't any good. And we did put some out there in the last week or so to try to get them to come in. What we're doing now is we're putting them on the test board before we install them and uh, see if we can get that up before we ever make a truck roll with them. Okay. Nothing wrong with the meter itself. It just won't call in. Okay. Uh, we did get some uh, emails today that the uh, Tyler Industries, which is our new billing software, they have been working on the connection, and we did get some emails today. They was actually asking when could they connect to our system to uh, get some data points out of it. So that was a good sign. They're actively working on it. Okay. So. You, I mean, you've heard the the enthusiasm and the interest from this council over the last couple of years on this. So please just keep us informed of what resources you need to get us where we'll, you need us We'll to see do. how many of these uh, refurbished modules we can get working. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, any other questions on the uh, DOA report? I have one other, but I'll hold off because it goes in conjunction with Kathy's stuff as well. Gotcha. I mean, I first saw it on the DOA, but <coughs> I'll hold off. Thank you. Motion to approve. Uh, the three items that were removed from the consent agenda. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any other questions or discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor say yes. 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 And opposed, no. Okay, Mrs. Holschlag, have our financial report. Well, I start off like I always do, telling you about the sales tax collections, and we are 2.5% ahead of where we were the same period last year, which I find remarkable, and I'm very grateful. <laughs> Every time I get that report, I kind of hold my breath and open it, but we've held steady so far. Um, I've tried to no put in the notes everything that occurred during the month of September. Um, we took a hit on the health fund. We have a slight loss month to date and year to date. Um, 
the transfer was noted from the utilities and so that left electric gas and sewer in the red that's about it I'd answer any questions I have two different ones and okay. I'll start with uh, the stormwater parks in rec okay. did we leave and, and I'm, I just don't remember we have a, a million a million eighteen four forty four left in the parks and oh, excuse me a million one hundred and fourteen two no nine left in the parks did we leave that there for a reason because I thought that was going towards the community center am I wrong I, I no I don't believe so sir I thought I, it I believe was for that the intent that it was it was left there but there's going to be a lot of furnishings and a lot of startup costs a lot of purchases and that's made over the next yeah. that's what that was intended for okay it's going to draw that down okay okay and then the second thing Kathy and you mentioned I first saw it in the DOA report and then mm -hmm. I noticed it that you even it, ask about or said mentioned it in it for the golf course um, expenses increased significantly from what the prior was, month yeah what was I mean what was the expense that went up so much I mean that it went up twenty seven thousand um, dollars I think month. a portion of that was in the salary line okay um, and Clay can correct me if I'm wrong I thought there was a fair um, expense for chemicals that kind of thing if I remember correctly That's correct. Thanks, Clay. so was there an adjustment to the salary line or I mean you, you mentioned no. I guess I'm kind of confused well i Motion to approve the financial report. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any Thank other you. questions? I'll call for the question. All those in favor say yes. 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 And opposed, no. Thank you, Ms. Holtz. Ask Daryl to come up. Daryl uh, Dunlap, you're requested at the podium, sir. Based on the, well, we've already approved some of the minutes, but this isn't minutes, but. Daryl had some things he talked about yesterday at the utility board that um, the council needs to know about and the council would, would like the council to give the blessing that it's things that we need to slash have to do so uh, go ahead okay the south list station that's the one if you turn on Colt Sandeson heading toward the fire stations in behind that substation right there uh, it's a two pump station one pump is bad the valves won't hold to change the pump. And then we lost one of the motor controls. We have some motors, but we can't get them in, basically. There's some pumps. We contacted Van de Venter since it's kind of limping along now. And that's who helped us with Route O. Uh, engineering and myself worked with Van de Venter. And we came up with a solution, <coughs> we hope. And uh, Van de Venter be supplying pumps similar or just like route O's and would be installed it we would be tied into the force main we'd be handling a lot of the electrical work and uh, that price is $166,863 is what they've quoted us we talked to the U board about it yesterday they recommended to the council that we do this work so that's that's kind of where we're at on route O this station the other one is uh, well six well six has a hole in the pipe on the suction column coming out of the ground uh, we got two quotes to fix it that was found Friday and it's gonna be a roughly thirty thousand dollars depending on how many sections of pipe they got to pull out until they get to the leak they think it's in a coupling uh, well four we about got back into operation we do have uh, indications on it as far as uh, depth of the wet well and things like that on the water side and uh, we took a water purity sample on the storage tank today and hopefully it'll come out positive tomorrow. We'll try to get it back online. Uh, well, six will be down about two days. Well, they, that's what Flynn estimated the timeline for. Uh, 
so of the of the things that Daryl just told you, the last discussion on well four, that's just operational maintenance. That's just we'll, we'll, we do it, we take care of it. But the the rebuilding of the Coat Sand Basin um, lift station and the repairing of of six, um, those are going to be some high dollar unbudgeted. They have the funds available. Um, so I'm. Guys, there's, there's some things that are, that are optional and there's some things that aren't. Um, keeping clean water going to the houses in this community, I'd say, is, is, one, is, is something that's not optional. Um, if the council doesn't have any further questions, we can, we, we can either put it on the agenda for next council meeting so that it, or, or give a nod that it's going to be okay to go ahead and get these projects done and get started and bring it back next council meeting anyway. Mr. Mayor, I move that we accept the recommendations from the utility board and move forward with funding these repairs. Second. I have a motion and a second. <clears throat> Would you say that the the replacement of the of the lift pumps is just an aging out deal? Yeah, it's just an aged out deal. I mean, it was an old design done back in the 80s where you you opened the hatch and you went down in the tube 15 20 feet and that's where all your piping and your pumps and your controls are and you know humidity and stuff just gets to them over time and it's just it's just old now, now the, the list station down at Coat Sandesson does not pump a lot of gallons every day even though it takes care of a pretty good sized portion of town it's not pumping a lot of gallons and there is I, I'm not I'm not trying to talk you guys out of what you guys just voting on, but um, there is a large overflow basin right adjacent to it. So if it if it quit tonight, we're not going to be in trouble for until the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I mean, but if I mean if Rado ever just stops, we have it goes to the creek. We got three <laughs> minutes. We got five minutes before we're in violation down there in Rado, based on the size of that holding. A couple days. Probably a couple of days, and it's just a two pump uh, station. That's one reason so much cheaper. And then uh, Kyle and I worked with Van de Venter and basically got something that we could have as many spare parts as we could for Route O and it swapped back and forth so we would have some similarities between them. But it is a lot simpler station. So does Willow Creek flow into that? That'd be a Kyle question. No. It doesn't? Okay. The other way. No. Your bronze house goes to it. Yep. If I get up in the morning and I don't have water, <laughs> well, you're going to have water. Oh, you'll it's have water. Brown. You have water. You just won't <laughs> be able to get rid of it. Dump it out the back door. Just open the back door. Yeah. yeah. Daryl. Don't make yes, my mama mad. Isn't it true? Are, is there another lift station out there where we're at now? Aren't they going to get ready to build a visible one? Another lift station out on Southlands out there? Out, out by the lake, at, down by the lake, there's a lift station there. Yes. So they're not, we're not, it's already there. We it's already there. Mm -hmm. Just to make sure. This station pumps from down there at the creek and behind the substation, and it discharges up by that church that's on C. There's about 92 Just north ahead. of C in Tennyson. Mm -hmm. okay. There's a list station right there. That okay. And this would happen this year within the next what, Yes, we, need to, we mm -hmm. need to try to get the timeline as, as tight as we can. All right, I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion on this? Hearing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor say yes. 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 And opposed, no. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. All righty. Moving on to unfinished business, we'll talk again about recycling yard waste and household hazardous waste. We did get some additional information um, over the last couple of weeks. Um, and I don't remember exactly where we left off, but we kind of came to a standstill. Um, but uh, the proposal has been um, list, listed again in our packet of what uh, the administration has presented us uh, options that we can we can do to come up with the shortfall 
that, that we're, we've been experiencing and we're going to continue to experience if we don't do something. Mr. Mayor, I have a couple of follow-on questions from the email discussion. Yep. Mr. Johnson, have you gotten any information from our recycling vendor that would provide us some value-added information? Um, not as much as I would hope. Um, I have learned that we had Wendy contact them. Um, they're not willing to share a whole lot of detail with us, but as far from the standpoint of what don't they want, uh, they don't, they would just as soon not have any, they would only like number one and number two plastics. Okay. Um, and then I, I, I did some research and kind of sent you guys some information. Um, vir right today, virgin first time plastic is actually cheaper for the producer, for the, for the bottle maker than recycled plastic. Um, part of that has to do with the pandemic. Um, there is such a, we, we, we've noticed in our gas receipts, revenue line item, that people just aren't driving like they're used to, so they, they have a lot of oil and a lot of gasoline uh, production potential. And shipping that to produce plastics is, is one way they're getting rid of all the excess oil that, that they have. So that's one reason that the, the, the price of the raw material has come down so much. And then what about the, the paper and the cardboard? Um, it doesn't matter whether it's, if it's, if it's very clean cardboard, they would take it separate. But um, we don't have the type, the quantity or the ability, or I, I don't think the households would have the interest in keeping their cardboard that clean and that separated. So the single stream on the, on the paper is still just, it's called mixed paper. Mm -hmm. Mixed paper is, is very acceptable. Okay. So I guess along that, that line of conversation, my assumption is that if we were to place the items of value into our recycling program, and provide that information to the citizens that this is truly what's accepted. It's not every piece of plastic, it's not what you think might be recyclable, but truly we need to look on the bottle, we need to look on, on the item and make sure that it's a one or a two and it's got the symbol and, and all of that, then I guess my assumption is then our, our total volume would go down and the value of that stream of recycled material that's going to the vendor would be more valuable to them. And then our recycling program would be sustainable. I will agree with the first statement you made. Our volume would go down. I don't know that they would charge us less. No, and, and I'm not assuming that they're going to charge us less per ton, but our volume will go down, so our total cost will go down. And then at some point, they may find value in what we're sending them, and our cost will go down because they're not having to touch it again. Okay. All assumptions. I, I agree. <clears throat> and I, I, I feel that's the direction we need to. My opinion is that's the direction we need to go with our recycling program, is make it valuable to our vendor, make it valuable to our citizens, and continue offering the program as close to what we have today. Understood. I, I have a little bit different concern. So as I'm going through the city budget, I, I have questions. <laughs> I see a couple of line items on revenue that are decreased pretty significantly. And I'd like a little explanation on that. We have some expenses that, that are the other way. Are we just trying to offset the number to say that we need the increase, or do we truly need it? I don't know where, where, you, where you. Okay, page one hundred three. If anybody wants to go to page one hundred three of their budget, are we going to the? Are we going to the budget now? This is in the solid waste budget. The solid Councilman waste Brown. budget. Okay. Yes, page one hundred three. And I gotta go. Straight. So 
under industrial services. We, we, 2018 was audited at 190,000. 2019 was audited at 221. Adopted for the 2020 was 2010. And we budgeted 180,000. That's a $30,000 difference. Is there, I mean, I, I don't understand how we um, went backwards on trash. Well, and Kathy can help me out on this, but look at the combination of industrial and commercial. Okay. Um, a lot of it depends on how that bill gets coded. So we look at those two lines together. Okay. Um, and we've also seen a little bit of, we, we base next year's numbers, we take the, the audited numbers into consideration. And then when we're doing the budget, we actually show six months numbers columns as well, but then we hide them for the printing, okay? So we look at how much we brought in for, like through June of 18, compared to the audited number. And then we look at the June of 19 compared to the audited number of 2019, okay? Well, when it came to um, doing 2021, we had the June number, the, the actual June number, just as we did, and on some of them, it just it just transposes across very close to 50%. And sometimes it's it's over, and sometimes it's less. And we we it John, it's a it's a guess. It's it's an estimate based on historical values, based on um, where we think it's going. But if you look too, then uh, the commercial service is up ten thousand dollars from last year. And the demolition revenue a, is a down lot of that eighty four thousand. A lot of that is or eighty five thousand. A lot of that is because people haven't, if you look in, it's actually, you know, three, two, $2,000 more than the audited in 2019. Um, that just, that's what we get for the roll off containers when, when houses are taken down. And, we, and in, I'm guessing so far in 2020, um, I don't have those numbers in front of me right now, but the demolition revenue was down significantly from the June of 19 and the June of 18, or June of 18 specifically. And so we, we made an estimate that um, 2021 would come in at about 140. And then the total operating revenue, we're still $40,000 40, $40, plus underneath on the two audited years that we show on the budget. We are. So is there not an adjustment that you would feel comfortable making with revenue on that? Not until I looked at the numbers again. I mean, we can, we can definitely look at those numbers again and when we come back in two weeks, tell you what, give you a little more detail as to what we saw in the, at the six month numbers compared to the year end numbers and why we came up with the numbers we came up with. And then and, and in that same sense, you look over to expenses 25-517-1050 and we've increased our part-time summer help mm -hmm. significantly over the two audited years. Mm -hmm. I mean one year it's almost 29,000. Mm -hmm. The other year it's 11,341 dollars. Is that just an error or? We'll have to look. Part of it might be that we lost the uh, we lost ability the, to use the We lost the inmates. The FRDC guys. That, that might be part of it. And then household waste was up, but I, I, I may have an answer to that. You know, we, 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 I'm just looking at what we're budgeting versus both revenue and expenses, and then what we're looking to go after as we talk about an increase. Do I, think that, do, do I think that recycling needs to be talked about separately? Maybe, uh, without a doubt. But there's just, there's just loopholes that... <laughs> and then on, on what is recycling contract? It's 25, 5, 19, 3, 
we have it for an expense of twenty-two thousand dollars that we've never had a line item for in any audited years, or even adopted last year. We're adding an additional twenty-two thousand mm -hmm. for. What line is that, John? Twenty-five dash five nineteen dash thirty-three hundred. That's where, okay. That's the actual cost of the recycling that we're paying for, correct? The four that's tons what's, per week. That's what we're paying to Federated in Jeff City. And if you look at a couple lines above that, at the tipping fees, t tipping fees is down. Uh, in previous years, we were including those tipping fees for the recycling in the tipping fees line item but they began coding those separately into the into that contract and into that expense. So that, that number is, was included as 22,000 and it was, it was backed off with the tipping fees line item above it. So we backed off 5,000 is still, so you think that our total for the year is $17,000 difference? Is that, is that what I'm I don't understand seeing? the question. So your tipping fees, for 2021 proposed is 375, yeah. 375,000, mm -hmm. and then the, the recycling contract is 22,000. Over prior year, you backed off 5,000 on the tipping fees, but added 22,000, so that's a $17,000 difference. But if you look at um, 2019, we're actually still less Below. Than, we, than we did in 2019. John, these are all estimates. These are all. I, I, I understand that, Bill, but we're, we're, we want to go ask for an increase from our, from our citizens. And I feel like I need to at least ask the question I'm, and understand how the numbers are coming up with I'm, as, as the budget's here in front of me. And I am more than, more than interested and willing to sit here and discuss these with you. So and I'm, I may not have an answer for every one of your questions tonight, but we will do our best to find an answer. You know, it's just things that look odd to me. Sure. That's all I have on recycling for right now. Okay, or so. The, or, or the discussion of recycling yard waste. We did actually get something all accomplished last meeting with the the yard waste. Um, we still have to figure something out here, though. Mr. From, Mayor, ahead, Mr. Simmons. Go from, ahead. from listening to all the discussions in the last month, two months, whatever, on recycling, from both citizens and other members of the city, it sounds like we want to keep recycling. But we need to make sure we recycle the correct stuff. And maybe it would help to put that out, as Jeff said, to the citizens. You know, this is, again, I know we did it once, like pizza boxes. Can't do that. Yeah. Uh, this is the stuff we want you to recycle, or we, we need you to recycle. But... It sounds like everybody should have a recycle cart. We can't keep asking our truck drivers to get out of the vehicle and pick up stuff off the curb. So that means we need to order more carts. Do we charge more for those carts? I think we charge a dollar a month right now, correct? Yeah. Um, I think last meeting, the number of $9 a month was thrown out, which kind of got ignored. Uh, $5 a month got thrown out, which people didn't like. $2 a month got thrown out. And comments were it's going to take five years to pay off the, the cost of the card itself. Sounds like none of the numbers that we're throwing out are going to make this project pay for itself. 
Um, it sounds like we just need to go ahead. We continue recycling. We need to make sure everybody's recycling the same, the correct stuff. Everybody that wants to recycle needs to have a cart. Right now, they would have to pay a dollar per cart. If we want to raise that to $2 a cart, we can talk about that. It's been at a dollar for since the inception many years ago. I, I don't think that's out of the question to... You know, it's... Definitely. But I think we need to keep recycling. I think we need to give the city, we the council need to give the city some guidance rather than keep talking about it every two weeks. We need to come up with an answer and just like we did with the yard waste. Let's just do it. Because we've got to get more carts if we're going to do it this way. Yeah, Columbia is, as an example, um, they've talked about doing roll carts for as long as I can remember. And they, one of the councilmen said that if, if they just keep kicking the can down the road, it's making the problem worse. They can't keep, you know, staff now. They're, they're, I think they're 30 percent understaffed. Um, well, didn't they stop herd side recycling? Yes, I believe they did. <clears throat> so, I know they've got drop off places all over the city. Yeah, they've temporarily stopped curb, curbside because they haven't got the staff to pick it up. Okay. Okay. But I guess my point is, uh, if we see a problem, let's try to fix it before it gets to be a festering wound. Well, right now, it sounds like we're taking recycling from citizens. We're causing the truck driver to get in and out of his vehicle a lot. Um, it's costing the city a lot of money versus just regular trash pickup. Um, we could at least alleviate some of that by limiting what goes into recycling by making the truck driver more the uh, more efficient in picking up the recycling and maybe charge a tiny bit more per cart is two dollars a month too much to ask that's what the council needs to decide but I think we need to continue recycling and we need to recycle them using the carts I agree. I think you're right there. The council does need to make a decision. And I think if we went to $2, that's not asking more than... I think that would help a lot. And I agree there. And, yeah, everyone needs a car. You recycle, you use a car. That would alleviate a lot. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have thoughts on that? Or a motion. Or, you know, anything. <laughs> In a perfect world, yes. You can tell them they're going to put this in and that, and you know that's not going to happen. Well, you can try. Whatever they, you know, whatever they want in it. You yeah. know what I mean? But it needs to be offered, I think. I still think it needs yeah, to be Yeah, there's ways we can inform the public uh, through social media, through our newsletter, about uh, trying to put the right things in this way. Yeah, Darren's back there in the control room. He'll, he'll do an article and mm -hmm. do, put... Get it on the website and on Facebook in the near future and put it in the next ar next version of the newsletter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor, in order to continue this conversation in a positive way, I will make a motion that participation in the city curbside recycling program would require a cart starting January 1 and that we raise the monthly cart rental to two dollars per cart. I'll second that. Very so, good. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I have a motion and a second. Any well, uh, it, it'll, and it will take effect when, we, when we're able to secure a correct well, we number of carts. That's what yeah, I was... Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Have to, but it, but it, but it would not long. take effect prior to January 1. <clears throat> this will give opportunity for feedback from the citizen. Sure. And it will give us an opportunity to place orders okay. for carts. It will give opportunity for the citizens to reach out to us and request carts mm -hmm. or turn them in. Can, 
can we modify your motion to say that as of January 1, we will not pick up from the curb? Yes, Once that, we was have, my, that was the I, assumption I, I, of my motion. Okay. Assuming. Once we have enough carts available. Well, Once right, right, months. right. Once everybody that wants a cart has a cart. And if I'm not mistaken, in the budget we had for the for 2021, there was money in there for twenty thousand dollars. Watch, I won't be able to find it. And if if we're informed that no, we don't have adequate time to order adequate number of carts, we can always change that date just, later on. I right. just say not before. Not before. When when it's appropriate. Yes. And we will. We will let everybody know when we get the carts and get them set. <coughs> but we could still go ahead with the newsletters yeah. and the yes. at Facebook yeah. and all that it'd other be a stuff. It would be Absolutely. great. That way we can get a concept of how many carts we're going to need to order right. and or yeah. how many people are going to turn carts in right. for carts that we wouldn't have to order. Right. Mm -hmm. So we've got, what, 30 people on the waiting list of carts? I think that's the number I heard, Robert. Is that right? 30 and 50, 30 Whoa. and 50? Well, there's, there's 50 to 75 houses that Solid Waste reported are currently utilizing curbside recycling without a cart. Every, every day. day. Yeah. Right. Every Not day. just one day, that's every day. So, so we're talking so they'd be a couple of hundred, yeah. yep. a couple of hundred people. So, uh, Madam Clerk, yeah, do you I have a... Say, I just yeah. want to make sure that I have this correct, since <laughs> there's a, a lot of discussion there. Yeah. So, um, beginning no sooner than January 1st, a city-issued cart will be required to continue participating in the recycling program, and cart fees will be increased to $2 per month. Is that that is my motion. Okay, yeah. thank yeah. you. And I second it. Mm -hmm. Very good. That's Any good. more discussion on this book? Could you read that again, please? <laughs> yes. Beginning no sooner than January 1st, a city-issued cart will be required to continue participating in the recycling program, okay. and cart fees will be increased to $2 per month. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. and, and that was very hard for me to make that motion that way because I am a huge proponent of the curbside recycling. But this is what we need to do in order to keep moving forward. I just have one question. But, but is that enough? Meaning for what? It, is that enough to make up for the shortfall no, in no. the recycling program? Well, no. 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 And we can talk about that after we get this before we clear it up it's some a, more. It's a move forward. I mean, it, at the very least, it should cover the vendor cost of the recycling program, and how we fund trucks and all of that can be a separate conversation. I think that's appropriate. At least we're taking steps here. So I have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor say yes. 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 Opposed, no. All right. So that's still going to leave us, what, 80 and change short according to our, our budget research. Well, and then, as a member, I reported the last council meeting, uh, Gary Ingerman with the county commissioner said that they would uh, be willing to assist in funding the household hazardous waste. They, he was, he, he'd like to go in at uh, $10,000. Um, that's not, that's about a third of the overall direct expense, and our indirect expense would be we also doing the staffing. But you know, if we can get ten thousand out of out of the county commissioners to help support, or you know, or else we, you know, if, if you guys want want them to pay for half, or we can just say, you know, you folks out of town you can't bring it to us. That's that's the option because we make people register, we make people get a reservation uh, when they're going to show up, and you know, just make them bring in some ID. We could we could just could restrict it to the city of Fulton. So, or we could direct bill to the county for as long as they agree problems. to be direct billed. Right. We can continue those conversations. So, I, how, what did you say the percentage was of people outside the city limits? Oh, it's probably between forty and forty-five percent. Okay. I don't have those. I, I sent you guys an email three months ago. Yeah. And I, I'm just—it was not half, but it was way more than I thought it was going to be. More than a third. Yeah.
That's kind of where I thought it'd be nice to be able to split with the county. We're, we're bringing them in more of the product, but we are also supplying the site and the labor associated with it. I made him the offer, hey, you guys want to take it over and I'll give you $10,000 a year? <laughs> he did not jump on that one. Shifting to yard waste, Mr. Johnson, have we moved the Tennyson? No, we have not. We're, we're evaluating. We're evaluating like the best place up there to put it, and it's going to be. It'll be March or April, probably for we to move it, right? Okay. Thank you. Just, there's no. It's not. Yeah, it's not going to happen. How are we planning on informing the public? Um, we'll put it well, again. We'll put it in the newsletter. Put it on Facebook. We'll put up signs. Okay. <laughs> we'll, put it, we'll put it in the paper. Yeah. <laughs> So with the additional funds from the county and raising the rates on the carts, where, where do we think we're going to fall as far as what, what we're going to need to come up with? I mean, you could, you could look at this so many different ways. It looks like we're still probably um, sixty or $70,000 short of being able to buy the truck every year if we want to buy that truck. Or we could look at it as um, let's, let's make these changes and implement these changes and wait six months and see, we'll see where we stand. I mean, it's, with, the, with the changes to the recycling program, you know, it, it might make a big difference. It's, it's also been suggested maybe we don't pick it up every week. Maybe we pick it up every two weeks. You know, which would which would then be a big savings. Well, for me personally, that would work fine because I only take it down about every two weeks. If I'm like everybody else, I mean, I don't see why that would yeah, would would be weeks. a big problem. That's maybe something we should put as a questionnaire on our on our page. Mm -hmm. I know I see a lot of people around my area. They have them out every day. Now, whether they're full or not is a different question. <clears throat> so that might be something we can look into as well. Yeah. Yep. And encourage them to, you know, I'd put almost, in what we do is like items that we can help that way. Yeah. I'd almost go with what Bill said is before we change too many things, let's go see what this does and evaluate it next year. Yeah. You know, three, four, or five months from now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The yard waste ch changes may have a significant change in our cost. Maybe. <clears throat> We'll it's going to free up. It's going to free. It should free up a lot of time. Right. I think we could probably do a little more education on what is actually yard That's hazardous waste. Also, definitely hard. That might help eliminate some stuff that we're actually paying to get rid of now that mm -hmm. could possibly be paid. We could be paid, or the person bringing it could be paid. There's precious metals. Car, car batteries and stuff yeah. like that. The hazardous, that yes. Actually, have core charges and stuff that. Uh huh. Pay for. Very good. Sounds like we kind of tackled this, guys. Fantastic. Right. Um. So there will be a. Uh, Courtney will create an ordinance that will put it on the next agenda for some of these rate changes. Okay. Very good. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right, moving on, we'll get an update from uh, Mr. Dunlap on Smart Grid. And my apologies, Mr. Dunlap, I skipped. I, your line item bled into the previous one, and I did not realize you were on the agenda. I think we pretty much covered it, unless somebody else has got some other questions on it, uh, with Jeff's question earlier, kind of where we're at. Okay. How's the new format working? I know we changed kind of who was heading up this project, so to speak. Um, is that, have we seen some improvement with communication? I think we've seen some improvement, but we had to pull him off on some other jobs like Route O and Well 4. And so the last couple of weeks he's been not on that particularly. But when he's on it, him and Micah Harris and the electric department's working well together to try to get stuff fixed. And 
then coordinating with uh, Kathy when she can put stuff in. Very good. <clears throat> Thank you, Daryl. All right, moving on, we'll talk about our chamber contract again. We did have a good meeting last week. Uh, we got a proposed amended contract from the chamber um, that we all have tonight. And um, there's a little bit of a narrative. I don't know if you want to go over that, uh, Mr. Johnson. Um, they, they, as I kind of discussed that night with them, that it just looked like they wanted to just narrow the focus a little bit. Um, and it, and this, this one, kind of one reason five or six years ago when we merged the FADC with the chamber, the, if, if, a, if a project or an activity came up, well, the chamber would say, that's not, that's not in our contract. And the FADC would say, that's not in our contract. So that's one reason we, that uh, Mayor Benton pushed to get the two organizations to merge. So that if it was economic development, it was the Chamber of Commerce. And I just kind of wonder with some of the uh, additional words that they have proposed to include in the contract, if it's, if it's an attempt to n narrow, and maybe not, um, but I just don't want to get in a situation where we ask them to do something that we believe, that we believe is economic development. And they say, well, no, that's not in our contract. And that's not what we want to do. That's, that's one, the one thing that I was just kind of curious about. And then the other one was, um, I think I, they, they have requested a three-year contract. And I think the one-year contract is good to get us, if, if for no other reason, to get us all together and all talking about it um, on an annual basis rather than every three years. And then, and then there was another thing in their con in their proposed that um, I'm very much don't think is a good idea, and that was it's referred to as an evergreen clause, um, where it had the automatic renewal. If we didn't come to an agreement, the contract would automatically renew under the current terms and conditions. Well, under that situation, it just keeps renewing at, the, at that rate and at that price, whether we kind of want it to or not, if, if, it's an, if, we, if we sign off on an evergreen contract. I have a little experience in an evergreen contract with an organ, another city group of employees. Well, the, the evergreen contract can't be in there and the one year versus three year isn't quite right because every year we've got to authorize the money whatever that number is every, every year would be subject to any so it, so the evergreen thing is a moot point I don't, I don't know I, 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 that argument didn't work when we were dealing with our union negotiations put it that way okay but if it's not there we don't have to have an argument yeah. Right? Well, if you have a three year agreement and you have a set number in it, unless you stipulate what the differences are each year, that's the only way that it would automatically renew it, whatever the current right. rate was. So I'm saying if we just go to a one year contract, no evergreen clause, no evergreen clause. we authorize whatever monies we're going to authorize. And that pretty much forces us to sit down with the chamber every year to discuss it before October or November, before November. Totally agree. So they can get their budget set and we can get our budget set. Definitely. So I, I think those two things are pretty important to have no evergreen and a one-year contract. Now, you, you mentioned the first item... Oh, shoot. Narrowing the focus? None. About what, that we wanted to do something, we wanted the chamber to do something, and they're saying it's not in the contract. Or I, we could, we could get to that. that was that's, not, that's not, that concern is not resolved with the existing contract for you? Is that? 
You had a concern. I, or could would they be receptive to a clause that said in any other economic any other project the city council believes is an economic development project? I'm okay. Absolutely. Or, yeah, come on up, uh, Kim, please. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, a couple of things. It's really, really, really important, and this is why we ask for ongoing dialogue, right? Because um, that's how we best learn what your expectations are and what our expectations are, and we meet in the middle and we find common ground, right? So your speculation about uh, we could ask the chamber to do something that, that you think is economic development and the chamber doesn't quite see it that same way, that's where we sit down and talk about it. it it's, so the, the changes to the contract were not meant to narrow the focus. It was meant to clean up some of the added upon language that had been evolved over time. Okay, some of that was to clean it up and to state the, the thoughts and the sentiments in our opinion, more clearly about the spirit of what was intended, rather than to get focused on the um, the nitty-gritty nuts and bolts, you know, little minutia details. Let's focus on the ideas. Economic development is important, and that's what we're focusing on and wanting to focus on. And so, the dialogue is all about establishing ideas of what you think economic development is, and and we want that ongoing dialogue. Right? That's how we get to a common ground and, and be happy with um, the request and the agreement or the whatever it might be. Right? Um, we, we contemplated putting um, or asking to add a clause into the contract about requiring an ongoing dialogue meeting quarterly, periodically, something, right, to force it. And your point about making the contract renew to force dialogue is legitimate. We don't want to do it here. We want to do it in, in, a, in a nice collaborative way, not at the city council meetings, right? Right. right? Yes. And so we, we were trying to put forward ideas that would smooth the way for that dialogue to be m more easily done. Okay. If that makes sense. It does, it yep. Does. And yep. we, I think we're all on the same page there. I had thrown out the idea of doing a mid-year evaluation, maybe uh -huh. on your side as well as our side. Just Absolutely. Kind of see where we're hitting our benchmarks. Maybe Absolutely. Maybe not hitting them. Yeah. That way at the end of the year, we're not, you know, saying right. griping about it. We have right. a chance to fix it. It's, it's not one way. It's a two-way <clears throat> conversation. And, and we can openly... Uh, strategize and plan for uh, brainstorm about economic development activities right those are the things we want to do together because we recognize the the investment that the city is making in economic development through choosing the chamber as its partner to do that and the chamber takes that seriously right and, and we want to fulfill good activities but sometimes there there has to be dialogue for you to understand what the resources are to accomplish those things, the price tags associated with them, um, and and the and for us to understand the vision and the goal and the target behind them as well. Sounds like we're on the same page. Uh, it really does. Um, okay. So we've kind of the we only other thing we didn't really talk about was the guaranteed or uh, guaranteed seats at different events and we had talked at the meeting that sure. that's a minor minor thing that, we that doesn't make. need to be an issue that, honestly that burden, that, yeah. yeah let's let's get our eyes on the horizon about what you know the work that we need to do absolutely and, and those um, the presence <clears throat> at the events is welcomed we, we would love the city to be at all the events and anybody attend that you want to attend so the arguing or negotiating about is it four tickets or is it six tickets to this one we don't care just come <laughs> just come well it sounds like we're gonna probably have something to bounce back to you guys then Kim, I, I, I have a question on the sheet that you handed out if you could sure. Jim please um, you have 
the city of Fulton lifted it, listed at 58,000 and, and then in parentheses underneath it, it was $20,000 for sponsorship. I know all that money, that 20,000 has been given to the chamber. So does that encompass the 330,000 or not? Or yes. is it just the line item column? Um, what I what I ended what I meant to indicate there was the fifty eight thousand is the committed um, investment in economic development stated, and then the twenty thousand dollars was layered on as additional, and it's in that sponsorship line item up above. But I okay. simply I wanted to to call it out and note it there, so that it didn't get lost. Okay. Okay. All right. So yeah. so just so I know that because as I look at this. Sure. To make sure the numbers are understand that it's all in there. Understand. Yeah, Thank we went you. from we went from 88 previously to 78 uh, in the composition of 50 and 20, 58 and 20, and and now the proposal is just 60. I think I don't remember Whatever what the initial we, was. We're going to talk about that too. Okay. Right? So yeah. So with that being said. And, and I, I do appreciate you sharing what the other, what the county and the other municipalities are giving. Sure. So we have, they're giving $30,310. We in Fulton are about 28% of the county total. Mm -hmm. And we're giving a large, large share. So mm -hmm. you can see where we're coming from on some of it as well. Absolutely you know, the population wise and what's up going on in the mm -hmm. county versus the city. Mm -hmm. I certainly, I think that needs to be mm -hmm. taken into account a little bit as and, well. And, and we, that's why we pulled together, we appreciated the question um, and, and haven't looked at it, you know, in quite the encapsulated way. Um, so I couldn't answer the question the other day, but we can now. Um, also, we wanted to isolate and highlight the other sources of revenue that also support the economic development work that we do. Um, economic development so supports existing businesses. The best way to, to keep your economic development is to keep the existing businesses you have. And so the membership supports that economic development work as well, and other corporate donors do as well. So, Lau? Yes, sir. For our, we've got essentially two more meetings this year, or three more meetings three. this year, right? Um, Correct. Three. 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 So, is this a one meeting yes. vote to yes. approve? Yes. This would be a resolution. So okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, am I assuming that in the interim, maybe before the next meeting, you and Bill and the chamber will get together and hash out a mutually agreeable contract that we can vote on that the board of the chamber agrees to? It still would have to go to the chamber board. Do they have yeah. Well, what did you have your hybrid? Yes, I sent it. Yes. I think we'd sorry, like the question, to. I'm sorry. The question was whether or not the chamber had received a hybrid contract, and that was the document I sent on Friday. Right. Right. So what we probably need to do is hash out exactly what we want to send back to them tonight. Okay. And that gives them time to look at it before our next meeting sure. and yeah. talk to me or us or whoever and mm -hmm. say, hey, this is cool. Mm -hmm. This is not cool. Um, yeah, it, it'd be nice to have a mutually agreed upon, okay. you know, um, yes. Document that we that we both expect to pass. <laughs> yeah, right. and obviously you can't make the decision for the whole board Correct. tonight, so you'd right. have to take that back. And, right. Yes. Yep. So. Absolutely. So, okay. so it sounds like most everybody's in agreement that we're talking a one-year contract, not a three-year. And that's fine. That we're not talking about the clause that says this automatically renews. It's That's your not preference. Be there. Um, what we were trying to do there, if I can, if I can, yeah. was to um, remove this this barrier, if you will, um, that that makes us feel like we have to rehash the entirety of the contract every year, right? If if the amount is what's in question, if our dialogue is producing good understanding, and we're and we're understanding is the work being done then the, the words on the paper 
you know, are, are functional and they're doing what they're doing. It's the dollar amount. Right. That and that's got to be approved every year. Absolutely, and subject to appropriations. So whatever language needs to be in there to, to, to support the city's requirements for a multi-year agreement, we didn't know what that was. And so we put forward the idea, if, if the multi-year agreement makes the process smoother in some fashion, that's what we were after. Gotcha. Okay. okay. Yeah. And it allows for more stable budgeting. Absolutely. And, and things like that. Absolutely. It allows for the work to continue. Absolutely. Rather than holding back on work. Yes. Waiting yes. on the, this whole contract to get approved is, yes. is how I'm interpreting but what you're saying. Absolutely. But absolutely. Even, even if you have a three-year contract, you can't count on Correct. year number two's dollars. Correct. Because they might change. Because yep. we have to approve that change. Right. Right. We can't just we can't today or this year authorize X dollars for 2023. Right. Right. Correct. So let's but just do a one-year contract. No. I'm and then that kind of forces us to get back together mm -hmm. again, whether we like it or not. <laughs> Hopefully, we <laughs> like it. <laughs> Gee. We gotta get back together. I know. And, and ideally, that ongoing dialogue would would let us know what the outlook looks like, right? right? right. And so th there, there comes stability in that. Yeah. Stability of budgeting is one thing, um, and we'd love that, okay? And, and with dialogue, okay, we can have a, you know, a feeling about what the budget looks like. But what has been so um, difficult has been that we, we just have to stop and give so much time and focus to this discussion and conversation and it's and it just stops all other work frankly right and we don't want that <laughs> we want it to be so much smoother than it is okay. and i know you do too i know you do too Ken, when does your board when do you meet again the first tuesday of each month is the chamber board meeting okay so and i'm i know it's kind of short notice i'm just kind of throwing it out there how would the council feel about a, a quick retreat in the next week or so to kind of discuss and, and come up with a plan amongst ourselves. We, I know we had some emails that went out earlier this week. I don't, I personally don't feel that they were very fruitful. Um, but perhaps if we spoke all together and came up with something that we could just present, um, mm. we might be a little more, it might be more beneficial. We're on a time limit. I, I understand, that. Is, I understand we're on a time week, limit. Right? Um, and Definitely. I, yeah, you know, wait. But I think it would be good for us to discuss this. Election day. Like Kim said, instead of doing this at a council meeting, we need to come up with something that we present to them and say, here's what we have, instead of doing that here. Oh, I think tonight we Is your board meeting decision. next Tuesday, November 3rd, election day? It is. That's okay. election day. Thank you. I think we need to move forward tonight. And that's personally my opinion. I think we've, we've waited long enough. I think that there needs Seems to be Seems like something. we've answered most of the questions except for the elephant in the room and that's mm -hmm. the, the number mm -hmm. that we would sure. propose yes. and please I, I agree with you mary I, I don't know why we want to wait let's let's just, just talk about tonight okay. yeah okay. Get done. And, and please I understand so. the work's going to go on in the spirit that it needs to be done mm -hmm. the work's going to go on and i'll need to be out in public yep best to our bill of abilities not knowing what the work may be next year. If, if we're still in COVID all year, it's going to be the same. You know what? Uh, <laughs> if the world's still in COVID, the world needs us more than it does this year. Yeah. And so yeah, we're going to be true. there, and we're going to be fighting and working with our businesses and supporting them and hoping to keep that sales tax number stable and increasing as it has been. And I said it at our meeting last week, and I'll say it again. I appreciate the fact that, Tamara, you guys stepped up to the plate with this whole pandemic and were asked to do yes. things that yes. you, you had no idea that you'd be doing. And the businesses appreciated that, and, I, and we all appreciate it too. Kudos so. to her yep. Yep. and her team. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Kim. You. Kim, I have one more question. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, I hear us moving closer to something, and then so I have to ask the question. Sure. Is salary and benefits for three employees, is that a correct number? Um, Yes, uh, salary, insurance, sure. um, payroll taxes, all inclusive. Okay. 
Uh, and, and please bear in mind, uh, this year we had a grant that partially supported uh, the position that Shane Morarity carries today. Uh, and so that full price tag comes on to the chamber next year. Okay, so in the uh, original contract proposal, we had put the number 60 in. Um, How does everybody feel about that number? Um, I know I did get an email from a couple of you that uh, entertained the idea of sticking with the, the 78 number for next year. I'd like to make a motion to do the 78 in a one-year contract with the proposed changes from the chamber. Second. Second. I have a motion in a second. Really quickly, I apologize. I heard 78,000 in a one-year contract. One-year contract and the proposed changes from the chamber. Okay, thank you. Could you read that, please? Yes, just one moment. All right, so the motion was to authorize a contract, which will be a resolution at the next meeting, just for clarification, at $78,000 for one year um, with the chamber's proposed changes to the contract. So leaving the green, the I renewal, automatic renewal thing in it? That would need to be removed. No. Okay, I do think... Um, I think it has to go to the hybrid. Right, so I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, Councilwoman Sabacher, are you talking about the hybrid contract, which is the chamber's wording, but it does remove that evergreen clause, mm -hmm. and it, we would make it a one-year contract, that's Correct. what you're saying. So you're yes. talking about this one? Yes. Okay. So what we're looking at, everybody, is what we're calling the hybrid contract, which is exactly what the chamber provided us mm -hmm. with their proposed changes, the highlighted items, which were the things we talked about the other night, and that includes us removing that evergreen clause and that three-year um, contract term. So that's the document we're looking at right now. And, and if we pass or fail this, we, we can also make a, another motion for other changes that we've talked about tonight, too. It might be a little cleaner to do that in a separate motion. Would you agree, Madam Clerk? Right. So, and like I said, what we're going to do is, um, assuming that we move forward with uh, Councilwoman Sabacher's motion tonight, it's really going to be authorizing me to draft that contract and have it ready for our next um, council meeting. That would then in turn mean that we would probably let the motion, or I'm sorry, the contract we have on our agenda tonight, we would have that one die. Obviously, we wouldn't have both of them. So, this motion is really more so to, to put it on the next council agenda with those proposed changes. And Madam Clerk, if I can clarify it, it actually says that we're going to submit that to the chamber for their review at their board meeting also or prior to to our next right. meeting. Right, and so it would go, I'm assuming it would go to, you're here, so you're hearing that communication, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's obviously going to go, um, if you guys make that motion tonight, they're under the assumption that we're gonna have it on our next agenda and that that's the direction we want to take and that you guys would then assumedly pass that contract at our next meeting. Would or, we need to make some Or have more and, communication. And they'd be able to review it beforehand. Kim, I'm sorry. Or, I, can't, I can't hear you. I can't <laughs> hear you at all, Kim. I'm sorry. <laughs> what I said was, um, hearing this discussion, and, and if you vote on this tonight, uh, Chamber has heard that and would take this um, version to the Chamber Board meeting on November 3rd, discuss it there, and uh, if it's acceptable, pass it and be ready to act when you act. Uh, if like it's not fun. acceptable, then we would have additional discussion. Can you come for Yeah. Can we put something in there, or do we need to do it at the next meeting where we would make some sort of mandatory biannual June, July, and then sometime around this time of year again? Mm -hmm. Would we do that now or at the next meeting when they've reviewed it and sent it back? You could do it now. Can, yeah, we do, I, mean, can I amend yeah. my motion to add yes. some sort of biannual meeting requirement? That's a good point. Just to, to keep that communication open? So, so from my I clarification, still second that. Yeah. We're, we're looking <laughs> at the hybrid contract. Yes. We want to add the semi-annual review. Yes, if that's, you know, that's and, acceptable. And the timing of that can be, yeah. you know, but totally I, I think June, July is a good, I think so too. A good time. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. 
All right, so again, just so we're all on the same page here. Yeah, sorry about we, that. No, you're totally fine. <laughs> Thank you. We yeah. would be approving 78 for the next resolution, $78,000, a one-year contract with the proposed changes provided by the chamber, which is the hybrid contract. Yes. And then we would also have in there a clause for semi-annual meetings, so that way we have more discussion and continued dialogue throughout yes. the year. there you go. All right, yes. does that make sense to everybody? Yes. Okay. Very good. Have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor say yes. 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 And opposed, no. Awesome. <laughs> can't five believe minutes, it. Mr. Mayor. No. Yes, sir. Five minutes? Uh, yep, yeah, sure. We'll break for five, guys.
I've been there. Let's It'll see, be I'll, nine years in bed. Can I get into this? meeting back to order. Hey, we're only on page two. Thank yeah. you very much, Mr. <laughs> Mayor. Oh, absolutely. Anytime. Yep. So we're uh, to the point of our face covering ordinance discussion. Uh, the topic just seems to keep coming up, so we just figured to put it on the agenda. Sure. Um, Thank you. Mm -hmm. That way we're, we're doing our due diligence and talking about it, thinking about it. Uh, we we did have to implement some changes with staff and and our facilities and if you would mr johnson um a week ago yesterday we implemented um, some face covering rules for the employees if you are in your cubicle or in your office you do not need to wear a mask if you're in a truck you, by yourself you don't need to wear a mask if you're working outside you don't need to wear a mask uh, pretty much under any conditions. Um, if you, but we do require a mask if you're not a, able to maintain six feet, social distancing. Um, if there's two or more people in a truck, um, all people in the vehicle must wear a mask. Um, what am I forgetting? Help me out, guys. We, if, like, we, we want you to wear your mask if you get up to go someplace else in the building. If you're walking through, walking around. Um, we've had, I've had, I've had one mini complaint on it, but I have asked several of the department heads if what they've heard and what they've seen. And pretty much, other than the one mini complaint, all the department heads have said it's been, it's just what it is. Um, we view the mask as being an extension of their safety gear. Uh, so if, if someone, when we realize, I, if you go in my office right now, as I walk out the door, I have a big note that says mask. Because, I mean, I got up and walked out, left my mask on my desk, and it's like, I get outside, it's like, oh crap, I gotta sneak back before anybody sees me. But we're, we're, gonna, go, we're gonna go off intent. If the, if the employee's intent was to not wear the mask and just push the system, then we'll, we'll deal with it. But if, if someone forgets and you know, walks across the room without a mask on, it's going to be like, probably won't even say anything. They're going to get out halfway back and they're going to realize, oh, no, my mask on. And we've had just amazing compliance with it. And, and I said this, this will stay in effect until some given date when the numbers in Fulton decrease to some very nice seven day rolling average. I don't know what that number is yet. Um, if it comes down to 15 and levels off, maybe after a couple weeks there we might. If it comes down to 20 and then 15 and we get all the way to 10 and it's down there for set, just 10 for seven days, we might do it then or I just don't know, but we, we'll, we'll know when we get there. Um, but we're just, trying to give every employee the opportunity to be safe. Uh, we also, just today, um, ordered a bunch of hands, automatic hand sanitizing stations. Um, talked to Gary Youngerman. He is going to declare them as a uh, eligible expense through CARES Act. So we're gonna end up paying 20%. I think we ordered, I think we ordered 40. Um, 20 of them are going to be wall mounted. 20 of them will have stands. Um, but we, we talked to I talked to Daryl and Kyle about the warehouse, and they would like one at, at the doors and then in the, in the vestibule. Uh, at the warehouse, the best, one vestibule will do uh, the gas department and then the mapping room. Another vestibule is, goes in and then serves both the water and the electric department. So. We'll have one in those areas. We'll have one at the main doors coming in. Uh, probably those will be wall mounted in the vestibules just because they're high traffic area. We don't want the stand there. We're getting some for the fire stations. Uh, Steve, Steve Meyer said they already pretty much got their place covered. 
and we'll get them for solid waste, we'll get them for animal control, animal shelter, um, solid waste barns at the, at the warehouse, get them for the service garage. We're just going to spread these 40 out amongst all the various departments and see how far they go. We, we actually counted up how many we thought we needed. We were up to about 35. And then every time somebody would say, oh, I'd kind of like, kind of have one here. So we, we bumped it up to another, bumped it up to 20 of each. Okay. And I think we, I think the wall mounted units, we, we actually bought one. There's, there's 150 of these out there on the market. We, we did a little research and we bought one, got it. It's actually over there in, in kind of our area right now. It's kind of a test unit. Um, everybody that's used it likes it, but we didn't want to, we didn't want to buy 40 of something that we didn't like. Uh, but we like this one. It's going to go out anyway. Any questions on that? Any questions on what we've done? Without getting into any detail, we did fog one of our buildings where we had a positive, is that right? Yes, we've, we've made an attempt to, every time a positive shows up to have Jeremy get the machine and, and, and fog the area. Oh. Um, Cove, Gary Youngerman just told us late last week that he is buying a small one for the police department, right? Do you know that? Oh, yeah, yeah, Gary's, the CARES money is buying every police department in the county, awesome. a small misting unit, right. um, handheld unit, mm -hmm. and yeah. making the assumption that you know we'll be able to use that for other areas too if we need, find the awesome. need or we want to just do something quick and quick awesome. and fast. Let's we'll go get theirs instead of going to get the one from the county. Yeah. But the county's been very good about letting us use theirs. We were we were kind of worried about scheduling and being able to get it when we need it and want it, but um, the county's machine has been at least for the times we've desired to have it and use it re very readily available. Yeah. All right? Yeah, thank you. Cool, thanks. And we've been getting updates from the county as to specific numbers of uh, Fulton. Mm -hmm. um, Sporadically. Yeah, not consistently, but I know they're, they're trying to give the numbers, I believe, in such a way that it's presenting a, a true picture of what's going on. Uh, one day, for instance, they might not get the reported recoveries as fast. Um, but that's kind of <coughs> speculation on my part, but, but, every, but I think every, we're getting a fair representation. But every time the city of Fulton gets a number, we have put that number out there. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Thank you. So mm -hmm. is there a way for us to get Darren to pull up the COVID-19 county site because this is something new that they have on their site that would be really, really helpful to know all the information. Can you pull it up and put it on the screen, Darren? Thank you. It's kind of a lot of the information that we ask for in writing. Do you know what I mean, Darren? Yeah. I'm, I'm. Thank you. It's not completely updated yet, but it certainly looks like maybe they're working the way it should be working. Oh, that's new. Huh? That's new. Yeah, it's brand new. It wasn't even there earlier. <laughs> Sorry to put you on the spot. Oh, no, you're fine. I just saw it. <coughs> cool. Yeah, I think I saw that yesterday. Yeah. I didn't see it yesterday, but okay. it just got put up. Oh, yeah. did it? Oh, that's something different. You're talking about with the charts? The chart? Yeah, yeah. The mm -hmm. charts and the graphs with ages yeah. and male, female. Oh, shoot. Oh, I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that. Yeah. See that. Mm -hmm. I thought you might want to see it. So anything like that, we we could share. It's public information. We could put it on our Fulton Fulton website as well as Facebook. And, and that's moving more the direction of. Okay. Is this what you're talking about? That's it. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. yes. Now it does say that the right side there is not updated as of yet. The 
best I could read it on my. Yeah. Yeah, I've still got coming soon hospitalization and gender. But I think that's certainly information that's nice. that mm -hmm. we could use to make Callaway. a decision on. Callaway For sure. Because what else, what, and Jeff, yes. do you remember what else we asked for other than the items that are on that? The other item from, from my line of work that is extremely important in understanding the spread of the disease is the positivity rate. That takes the number of people that are tested. Correct. And it tells you the rate of those people tested, how many of them come back positive. The, the kind of the threshold that most of Missouri and most of the country is using is anything greater than 10. So anything greater than 10% that are coming back positive means that that disease is spreading, I, I won't say uncontrolled, but it's spreading at a rate more than what is desired. I do not know what Callaway County, I was trying to look it up real quick to see if it was listed anywhere, but I can tell you that Cole County yesterday was reported at almost 21% positivity rate. Wow. So that's twice <coughs> the desired mm -hmm. threshold. I can tell you that hospitalizations are way up in Cole County and in Boone County sure. due to COVID related symptoms and, and disease state. I can tell you that the, we, we call it the hourglass of the state of Missouri. It's, it's everything from, you know, Kirksville to Springfield and east and west except for St. Louis and Kansas City. So if you imagine that design kind of looks like an hourglass. We have been on ICU and PCU diversion for the past three weeks. In the seven years that I've worked at my current employer, we have never been on ICU diversion for greater than a week at a time, and it's been three weeks ongoing for the entire region that's on diversion for ICU and PCU beds. We, we have, the disease is continuing to spread. What's PCU? Um, uh, it's it's the, the step down unit. So it's, it's intensive on, on care the and then on the floor. And on down. the floor. It, it's the not quite ICU level. Mm -hmm. I know the news this afternoon, the local news said Cole County was one of the worst counties in the state in terms of infection rates. <clears throat> like they said it was red, whatever. In that that's the the worst that that's the it, they call it the r naught and i can't even really tell you what r naught stands for we've just used it so much it's it's become its own yeah. word to me but it's it's the spreading it, it's the the rate of spread within a community well if the last three weeks is any indication what the next couple months is going to look like it's definitely looking like it's getting worse but uh I, but I, know, I know we've been going on the numbers from the county, and I'm going to just throw out round, round numbers, but like 200 was the total infection, the numbers in the county, and Fulton city limits was 20 approximately. So we were running, I'm going to say 15%. Of the county being infected, which is really hard to kill. You know, if you put an ordinance in, it's hard to to tamp down only 15% of the infections. But then recently, they pulled up the FRDC numbers, which is half of what they were counting for the county. So rather than 15%, now we're at 30%. So really, there's. Well, the numbers up here say it's 122 <coughs> infected in Callaway County and 30-something are in Fulton, which is getting a lot worse, percentage-wise. But, uh, I mean, I know... I, I to speak out of the other side of the conversation, 
Callaway County numbers are still extremely low compared to our population base. Right. And Fulton numbers are extremely low. I mean, even at 35 active cases out of 13,000 people, point zero zero that is three two. tenths of one percent. Yeah, it's three now. percent. Yeah. I mean, that that's. There are many other diseases that have a higher prevalence rate in this yeah. in this city right now than than COVID does. But we are also three times what we were a month and a half ago, and that number is not going down. I believe the people that are wearing masks will continue to wear masks. That's the sad part about it. I have a personal experience today where I know people weren't wearing masks, and a dear, very dear friend of mine lost his wife today from the disease. <laughs> it's sad because people didn't want to take the time to wear a mask. COVID virus <laughs> killed my uncle three weeks ago. He was in a nursing home since last November. We have been unable to even visit him since February for fear of bringing the disease into the nursing home. A staff member unknowingly was exposed and brought it into the nursing home. Within a week, 20 were ill and two were killed by the virus. It is a serious virus. And but we also have serious decisions we have to make of whether or not we pass a law on our citizens. That, that's the conflict that's in my head. And I know Sunday I went to Walmart. You know, they've got a requirement that you need to wear a mask. <coughs> Just passed a couple of people that weren't wearing masks. Just not that they, they were just blatantly not wearing them. I stopped off at Westlake's. They had the same requirement. And you have to trip over a table that's got masks they give away for free. Yeah, Walmart's And away free too. 20 feet away from this table was an associate wearing a mask helping three people who had no mask on. Mm -hmm. They're stupid. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. But that also it's common sense. Wear a mask. It also comes to enforcement of the rule. You're right. Walmart has chosen, you know, Walmart passed a thing. Every Walmart on the planet had a sign said you're required to wear it. Yep. But there is no enforcement. The very next day they sent a note out going, but you will not enforce it for fear of well, you, of you hear retribution. every week you hear of people trying to enforce a mask ordinance, and you get into fights and. Yep. I don't know what the answer is. You know, it, people need to have some consideration for their fellow citizens. Wear the mask. It's not that big a deal. Except I can't see because I fog up my glasses. But that's <laughs> Especially the last couple of days, huh? Yeah. 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 yeah, there's places that you know you're going to go and see the majority of folks without masks, I think, yeah, yeah. generally speaking. Uh, you kind of know where, you're, where you want to be and where you don't want to be, um, where you want to shop. Yeah. I, like that. It, Kiwanis is having a big bingo night in a couple of weeks. And we will be six feet apart, and the tables are going to only have four to five people, depending upon the size of it. Okay. And there will be plenty of social distancing, and a mask is being recommended to wear by all. Okay, that's good. I can recommend. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> I think we've uh, done our due diligence and talked about this going forward. Um, if if there's a big spike again, you know, let's talk about it. Let's let's get together and and see where we're at. Um, unless I hear anything different, speak now or forever. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I'll just repeat what I've said all along. I believe that a mask ordinance should be part of our state of emergency. Um, ordinance and state of emergency declaration and one more tool in that toolbox versus being looked at as a separate item. So are we in a state of emergency? No. no. We, we talked not. about that. We do not actually have to be in a state of emergency to pass, pass okay. the mask ordinance. So that's an option. We could or could not do that. But uh, I appreciate you bringing that to light, uh, Jeff. And when, when the time comes, we'll, we will mm -hmm. consider that as part of it. But so I guess we probably need to talk about it next meeting too? Well, 
I think unless it starts getting to be a non-issue, uh, it's probably important to keep, to keep talking about it. Maybe we just keep this as a uh, ongoing unfinished business topic to to bring up and, and discuss. Is that is that what you're asking? Yes. <clears throat> I believe so. I agree. So that's what we'll do for, for the, going forward for a while. Okay. Budget. Fun, fun. <laughs> we don't have any changes other than the change we made tonight, or well, that we're suggesting to make tonight with the uh, chamber contract and the, as well as the trash recycling carts. So obviously those two items will have to be adjusted. And we'll <clears throat> end up pulling out of the general fund, I guess, for the extra 28000 Yes. 18000 Well, no, sir. It'll come out of... We've, yeah, 18 For the past, past several years, we've taken that, that most funds straight from utilities, so we'll go in and we'll modify the transfers from utilities to the uh, chamber account. Very good. <clears throat> Are there any questions or um, things we, that, that we've missed talking about on the budget yet? Um, I know we mentioned it last time. We will have our public hearing at our next council meeting. And um, there was a little mix up, I think, with the paper getting it in. So we'll have it next time, obviously not tonight. Very good, and I, I think know, um, I know that we spoke directly about the increases for city employees, <clears throat> and I can't figure them out. So I would like to, if if somebody could please send an email, get together with us on on how we came up with it. If I look at what our employees for each department is, take the difference even from last year and divide it out. It doesn't make sense to me. Well, I understand there's some variance in there a little bit, but there's, there is going to be there is going to be some modifications in some. And some. some some departments, there's new people. On on many departments, we've had high paid people retire, and they someone comes in at a lower rate. I asked the same question, uh, Michelle and Robert and Kathy. It's it's we call it the CWB tab. I'm not quite sure what that stands for, but CWB, um, it has been reviewed. The current personnel are listed on that tab. And you're welcome to come in and look at it with us. Let's show it to you. Um, but in, in several instances, we're budgeting less next year than we did this year, even though we, even though we gave that 75 cents across our rate. And that has to do with people leaving, people retiring, you know, or people moving departments. Or people moving departments. And I'll just go to page 28, <laughs> and I see $98,000 plus two employees on FTEs. What page you say? 28. 28. Okay. There's a ninety-eight thousand dollar difference there. Well, if you see we that, plus there's two employees, there's two, there's two more employees. And I didn't remember us being without an IT manager in 2020. We didn't, but we moved it into finance okay. because the the IT station is right next to finance, and. Kathy just really just utilizes the IT more than Kathy more than everybody else put together. You computer <laughs> hog you more than more man. than every other department put together. But I would I would I mean I would really like that to be checked out and, and relooked at because and I and I don't have a problem talking to you on the phone. Unfortunately, I probably am not able to make it during your working hours. 
at this point. But call call anytime. It just it, it looks really wacky in some situations. I did try to take in consideration 100% if we were splitting mm -hmm. and everything else, but it certainly is not something I'd like to look at more and have looked mm -hmm. at. We will we will look at it. They will look at it again tomorrow. Thank you. <coughs> All right. <coughs> we appreciate each and every one of you scrutinizing this. Um, it's always good that get some extra eyes on, on this and check some balances. So, Mr. Mayor, just another question on the budget for Kyle, and it goes back to the conversation we had earlier about the pedestrian walking between Collier and Westminster. Any of those conversations with MoDOT that you think would be significantly impacted for the budget for your, your department or the street department? that we just need to try and get an answer for before the next council meeting? Yeah. If MoDOT was able to do a cost share with us, that would, uh, right now my estimate for a sidewalk on the east side would be Approximately two hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Now that's with some some uh, city forces doing some of that work, mm -hmm. and so uh, you know if we were if we were half, having to make having to pay for half of that, um, it curb and gutter, storm sewer. Mm -hmm. There's money in the storm sewer um, sales tax that could go to that 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 could help pay for that. So um, I believe we're covered if if. That should arise. Okay. Thank you. I don't believe it. I know it. So. Thank you. I appreciate that. The other, the other question that I have that I would like to, to be, made sure we have it figured in, is our large jump in the golf course, whether it's figured into salary or, or where that dollars, whether they're accounted for, in the 2021 budget or not. Okay. Okay, anyone else? Moving on to new, uh, we don't have new business tonight. We'll do our council concerns. <coughs> uh, starting to my left, Councilwoman Sabacher. I wanted to just make sure that everybody is kind of thinking about our, our Christmas tree and the Festival of Lights, um, discussing whether or not we're gonna mm -hmm. do that. Um, I know I did it last year and it was a lot of fun. So I don't know if is the city are we still doing that? Is that something that's down the roundabout? Yes. yes, I have got the no. oh, email. No. Oh, it's park. Park. <laughs> the Festival of Lights, is that what they call it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Festival of Lights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's still on. Okay. It's a go. I still want to do it. So if yes. I have gotten an email on it, Val, and I'd be happy to, to pay the money, but I might pass it off to you if you wanted to yeah, to spearhead it. Sure. I don't know what my schedule's gonna be like. You got it. And I have the box with all the ornaments and everything else. Okay. And that was all I had. Something fun. I like yes. it. <laughs> it was fun. Yes, fun. Councilwoman Reclue? I have nothing tonight. Thank you. Councilman Bryan? Uh, yeah, there's one thing that we spoke about when we talked a while back, and maybe it was even at the budget meeting, and that's our wage and salary. And I don't remember whether we put a name to it, but we were going to get together some city officials. Um, and, and some employees, and then Ms. Sabacher asked if she could be the kind of the liaison between it. Did we put a name to it on the commission for salaries and wages and how that was going to go? Anyway, I'd, I'd like to know I what the status of did. that might be. I'd like to know what the status of that might yeah, be. Yeah, we, we talked about it, I know, after the fact, and it was just a little... We were a little uneasy about including uh, employees in that discussion. It just seemed that might be a conflict, but uh, but we'll talk about it some more. I, I honestly kind of forgot about it, John. <laughs> but <clears throat> but yeah, we we've got time between now and 
next year to review salaries from different cities. Well, we were going to put some. We were going to figure out what the highs and the lows were, and right. I mean, there was much more to it than than what I just explained. But <coughs> I, I would really like to see that. We will form a committee. What do you want to call it? Salary uh, investigation. Ali, <laughs> it's your choice. <laughs> okay. Councilman well, Sabacher's the volunteered to be the liaison. Oh, I can come up with something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll try to be working on that, be proactive on that. And that's all I had this evening. All right, Councilman Shiverdecker. Yeah, actually, I do have something. And I know you guys really don't care what I've been doing for the last month. But <laughs> I've been following around the bridge inspectors from MoDOT for the last month in the county. Oh. And I wanted to give one of the city of Fulton's employees a, a kind of a kudos. Uh, when we got to the city limits and started doing bridges, this gentleman pulled up, Mr. Scott Olds, um, and started talking to us. Come to find out, he is the ins one of the inspectors for that for the city. So he followed us around the rest of the bridges so that he can get the heads up on what's going on and report back to Kyle. So Great. I thought that was kind of a nice thing. Very cool. Yeah, very, yeah. Yeah, you learn so much from your peers that way both ways yeah very good thanks for giving him a shout out there all right councilwoman pace nook i have nothing thank you councilman stone i wanted mr johnson to finish his comment of when the the beautiful tree is going to go up in the roundabout um i had, a, I, had I got that asked of me twice so far this uh, yeah. <laughs> with within yeah. the next week oh good wonderful oh, we That's made great. contact with the uh garden club they have spent two days down there gathering seed. As I understand it, the, I believe that the downtown kickoff is going to be the first Friday night in November, if, if tradition holds. I, I actually have a call in to them, and they haven't called me back yet to confirm that. Um, but they have given us permission to put the, the pole back up and set the ring. Um, but they want to do a little more work in there before we go in stomping and tromping to, and set all the lights. But we'll, I'm guessing, the, I'm guessing the pole and the ring will go up this week. Either that or early next week. But, um, well, because <laughs> a week from Friday is probably downtown kickoff, so just kind of throwing that out there. <laughs> <laughs> it'll, it'll be done. It'll be ready. Wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. That our community very much appreciates Oh, that's that. a great, great project. It sure is. That's it, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Councilman Simmons? No items. Okay. All right. Mr. Mayor. Moving on to resolutions. Mr. Oh. Mayor. Oh, sorry. I, just one more thing I wanted to add. Councilman Shiverdecker reminded me a couple of weeks ago, um, the Solid Waste Department came down my street and picked up our trash, and it made a huge mess. My neighbor brought it to my attention, and before I had the opportunity to go out and clean it up, um, they came back. And picked it up and cleaned it up and it was um, David Whiteside so I just wanted to make known that he did that and I appreciated it and that was an awesome job and kudos to him for for doing that they didn't have to but I was thankful that they did so that's awesome that's good. mr. mayor if I can also have an <coughs> alibi okay. just a huge thanks to the solid waste department for the citywide the cleanup, uh, cleanup. Yeah. last week there was so much work seen by so many people done by so many people and just above and beyond even what we've seen in the past i know that the crews were going around to neighborhoods that might not have even been on on that particular day to make so that they could sure. get get a jump start mm -hmm. Let, let's go to areas that already has stuff out even if it's not due till wednesday mm -hmm. they were out tuesday night yeah. To make their Wednesday easier and better, and it was it was noticed by many, many in the community of how much work mm -hmm. went into that, but they all did. <clears throat> we have a great staff and yeah. doing little things like we're doing tonight of, about requiring cans for recycling. That makes their job easier. So that that shows a little appreciation on our part that we care about our employees too. So. <clears throat> All right. Moving on, uh, 
to resolutions. Councilman Stone, if you would present resolution 3383. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I would like to table resolution number 3383 until the next council um, meeting. Really quickly? Sorry, really quickly. Well, or what, what's my, what's my You're first. good. You're good. It's actually <laughs> already on the already table. On the table. Yeah. So um, if we don't get a motion to remove it from the table, it dies. And that's probably the easiest thing. If our intention yeah. is to go ahead and let this one die, let's give it a second. See if anybody has anything to say. If not, then let's move ahead. And then it will simply be represented as a new as a resolution new. with a new number <coughs> and all of yes. that. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Yep. I, I assumed we needed to table this one again in order to make that happen. No, you are fine. So then, Mr. Mayor, I take no action at this time. Very good. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> and we will move on to resolution number 3384 and Councilman Schieberdecker if you would in Bob's absence present this for us. Yes sir. Resolution number 3384, a resolution authorizing the mayor on behalf of the city of Fulton, Missouri to sign all necessary documents in relation to an exclusive beverage agreement with Jefferson City Coca-Cola Bottling Company of Jefferson City, Missouri for certain parks and recreation facilities. I make a motion to um, consider resolution 3384 at tonight's meeting. Second. Very good. You'll have to refresh my memory. What was the hold up on this? Did we want to get something cleaned up um, on the contract? It was, the, it was the locations that it was required. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, gotcha. and it's not in all the city facilities, that it's just at <coughs> Tanglewood, um, the Rick <coughs> Center, and the swimming pool. Yeah. Yep. And it's gotcha. clean. It's, it's, it's been clean. Okay, any questions, discussion? All those in favor say yes. 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 And opposed, no. All right, <clears throat> we'll move that forward. Moving on to ordinances, Councilwoman Sabacher, if you would present bill number 1597. Yes, sir, bill number 1597. An ordinance adopting an official budget and capital <coughs> improvement program and appropriating the funds of the city for the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2021 and ending December 31st, 2021. I make a motion to place bill number 1597 for second reading at the next regularly scheduled council meeting. Second. Okay, and we've already discussed the budget a little bit tonight. Are there any other questions or discussion on this? Mr. Mayor, I have a question for the city clerk. <coughs> Yes, is sir. just point of order, can we do first reading of this prior to the public hearing? We actually can. <coughs> um, we, and there have been instances in the past where we've done the public hearing on the third reading. So it's just required that we um, provide a 14-day notice and that we give the public the opportunity to, to see and to speak. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I couldn't remember. Thank you. Good mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right. <clears throat> Hearing no discussion, I'll call for the question. All those in favor say yes. 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 And opposed, no. No. Okay. Seven, six and one? Yes, sir. All right, moving on to bill number 1595. Councilman Braun, if you would present this for us. An ordinance, a bill number 1595, an ordinance authorizing the mayor on behalf of the city of Fulton, Missouri to execute an agreement with the County of Callaway, Missouri for public emergency communication operation services for the City of Fulton for the year 2021 to 2022. I make a motion to put Bill 1595 for third reading at the next scheduling meeting. Second. second. I have a motion and a second. <coughs> <coughs> we did talk about this last Meaning I don't believe there's been any changes to that? Correct. That correct? There have been no changes. And it's already in the budget. Yes. I, I do want to correct myself, see. actually. I believe, Mr. Councilman Braun, you noted there was an error within the document last time. That has been corrected. But the bulk of that document doesn't have Thank you. Gotcha. Any discussion on this? Hearing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor say yes. 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 And opposed, no. Moving on, Councilwoman Pace Nook, if you would present Bill Number 1596. Yeah, and if there are no objections, I'll do second and third reading tonight. Absolutely. Uh, bill Number 1596, an ordinance amending Section 110-248, speed limits, Paragraph 3, 
Fulton City Code by designating a speed limit for certain streets and establishing an effective date. I make a motion to place bill number 1596 for third reading at tonight's council meeting. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion or questions on this? <clears throat> Hearing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor say yes. 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 Opposed, no. If you would again. Bill number 1596, an ordinance amending section 110-248 speed limits, paragraph 3, Fulton City Code, by designating a speed limit for certain streets and establishing an effective date. Make a motion to place a bill number 1596 for final passage at tonight's council meeting. Second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor say yes. 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 And opposed, no. Hearing the bill read three times at this time, I would ask Madam Clerk to take roll call for a final vote. All right, Ms. Reclue? Yes. Ms. Sabacher? Yes. Mr. Shiverdecker? Yes. Mr. Simmons? Yes. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Braun? Yes. And Ms. Paysnook? Yes. Seven council members affirmative and one absent. Okay, and our last bill tonight, Councilwoman Sabacher, if you would, bill number 1593. Yes, sir. Bill number 1593, an ordinance of the City of Fulton, Missouri, adopting floodplain management regulations designed to protect the health, safety, and general welfare of the public. I make a motion to place bill number 1593 for final passage at this council meeting. Second. second. Having a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor say yes. 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 And opposed, no. <clears throat> You've heard the bill read three times at this time, Madam Clerk. Would you take roll call for final vote? All right, Ms. Sabacher? Yes. Mr. Shiverdecker? Yes. Mr. Simmons? Yes. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Braun? Yes. Ms. Pace Snook? Yes. And Ms. Reclue? Yes. Seven council members affirmative and one absent. All right, Madam Clerk, if you wouldn't mind doing the announcements. Wonderful. So the remaining uh, 2020 <laughs> council meetings will be held November 10th, November 24th, and December 15th. Um, candidate packets for the offices of first through fourth ward council members and city prosecuting attorney are available in the office of the city clerk beginning November 2nd Ooh. and thereafter Monday through Friday 8 a.m. to 5. Candidate filing opens on December 15th, 2020 at 8 a.m. and closes January 19th, 2021 at 5 p.m. For additional information, please contact my office <coughs> at 592-3111. Very good. Mm -hmm. At this time, we have no need for an executive session. I would entertain a motion to, motion motion to adjourn. adjourn. Second. Okay. Motion and second. All those in favor? <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. <laughs> All right. Great job tonight, folks. Hey.